Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory, or in this case, my continuation of what is matroid theory, which I brute force identified with algebraic graph theory. Anyway, I will uh, remind you a little bit of what matroids actually are, and then I will tell you kind of the second type of the second part of it. And um, because they are kind of also generalizing linear independent sets, and sometimes it's a bit nicer to think of linear independent sets instead of, of bases. Um, but anyway, so there are some beautiful things you can say. For example, all bases are of the same size. Uh, it's kind of uh, remarkable. So kind of the maximal linear independent sets. So let's just get started and let us remind ourselves what a matroid is, but now in a slightly different language. So the languages, by the way, what I'm going to show you now is equivalent to what I showed you in the previous video. Um, and it's a little bit a matter of taste which one you would prefer over the other. So sometimes this one is nicer, sometimes the other one is nicer, uh, but I would like to have both mentioned. So here in my linear dependence example, um, which really is A, B, C on here, they are linear dependent, and here they are not, right? So uh, C is clearly in the plane spent by A and B, which is just saying it's linear dependent uh, com compared to A and B. And last time I tried to kind of convince you that matroids generalize vector spaces because there's a matroid given whose bases are exactly kind of kind of bases in a vector space. And the only thing I observe now here is that there's a notion called linear independence, which you all know very well from linear algebra, which really is related to bases. Namely, the bases are the maximal linear independent sets. It's an alternative definition of a basis. Basis is a maximal linear independent set. And if you just think about that definition, and you know that's kind of an alternative definition of what a basis is, um, then maybe, maybe what we should do is we should somehow think about generalizing or rephrasing, generalizing is a very, a very wrong word here, rephrasing um, the notion of what a matroid is to, uh, based on linear independence, because it gives us a slightly different point of view and kind of linear independent sets are much richer in some sense than basis itself. I still think that the definition by a basis is kind of the natural one, but this is somehow a little bit richer. That's why I want to do it as well. A little bit richer in quotation marks, I say it again, definitions will be equivalent. A matroid can be equivalently defined as what we will see in a very few slides. And we can start with our linear independent matroid. And it's really just a linear independent matroid is exactly what you think it is. You start with a matrix, and here are my little vectors, and you can easily tell which one is linear independent, which one lies in which plane. And for example, ACE and CE are linear independent. So A, C, E, yeah, they're clearly linear independent. I just took my uh, little coordinate vectors here, but also the subset just with C and E is linear independent. Right? So we get kind of a finer structure compared to the basis, uh, because only this one from my previous example is really a basis. The other one is, is not. There's a missing vector, because the basis is the maximum one. And you could still add a vector to the other one. But note here that we could also just do it using linear, linear independent sets and get a little bit of a richer structure. We can somehow get uh, more sets to play around with, it's more structure in some sense to play around with. In the graphic matroid, the um, the uh, bases were the for the spanning forests, kind of the maximal one. In the linear independent sets, we could just define them to be the ones having no cycles. So here is my starting graph G, and here are, for example, linear independent sets because they don't have any cycles, but not all of them. So this one is actually, uh, so those two are spanning because they touch all vertices, but this one here is just linear independent. So we get a slightly larger set. If you just say, in this case, the linear independent sets are the ones having no cycles, right? So uh, the trees, if you want, or the forests, and the maximal ones are the spanning ones. Okay, so this gives us a slight reformulation as it looks like, and it turns out it does. So a matroid can be equivalently defined compared to the last video, which used bases, as follows. So it's a pair of some ground, ground thing that's the same as in the basis setting, and now a set of, which we call linear independent, 
such that, okay, it's not empty, the usual existence. And then we have the vector exchange property, which is very similar to the basis exchange property. And it says essentially the same thing. So whenever you have I in J, and then both of them are, of course, um, so J, sorry, J is to be assumed to be linear independent. Every subset of a linear independent set is linear independent. That's what it says. And if we really find something that is small, yeah, then we can find an I to make it larger. So let's actually have a look down here. So for our little graphic monoid. So here's my graph, and this is my I, and it's somewhat is too small, right? So we can still include an extra edge. And in J, we can just put this edge and we get the, the additional one. So we can successively make linear independent sets bigger. And that's what you all know from linear algebra. You do that until we hit a basis. So the maximal ones are exactly uh, the basis you can see. And sometimes it's actually, so this is equivalent to the basis definition, but you somehow have more sets to play around with. And I said again, the maximal linear independent sets are exactly the basis. So in this example, the maximal linear independent sets are spanning forests, the ones that hit all vertices. Anyway, sometimes it's kind of nicer. Uh, one language is nicer than the other, or the other language is nicer. And it's also a matter of taste which one you prefer. I prefer the definition using a basis because it kind of makes sense to me. The other one is essentially equivalent, but I, I have slight bias for basis. Okay, I have slight bias for basis. Nobody's perfect, I have slight bias for basis. Sorry, linear independent sets. But linear independent sets should definitely be mentioned as well. Okay, and in this funny example that we had, and we will see several times, uh, this picture here, where the matroid is just the points you see, so that's my ground set E, and I is all subsets of order smaller than four. So I, uh, so for example, a subset could be just so those two points that would be in I, uh, in fa fancy I. This is supposed to be a fancy eye. It's an ugly eye. So let's just say an ugly eye. Okay, those two vertices are an ugly eye. And um, the maximal ones should be the bases. So and there's always four points, but not all subsets of four points as makes this matroid so exciting, but only the subsets that do not span one of those areas that you see. So this one is bad. So no. But for example, if I take this vertex and those three vertices, that's good. So everything that doesn't span a face in the picture above is good and is a basis. But the linear independent sets is just everything smaller as well. Um, and that's a pretty cool example here because it's neither linear nor graphic and we will come uh, back to it later. So and the whole point here is to just mention this linear independence definition, which some sources prefer. I'm just a big fan of bases, so fan, fan, fan of bases. So I prefer bases, uh, but they're equivalent. And for me, bases make more sense, fine, but linear dependent is a bit of a richer structure. You have more sets to play around with, and sometimes it gets get something a nicer picture. That's why I wanted to tell you about it. And then next time we continue with more fun with matroids. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.